I remember. Corvo left his mark on Cold Ridge, but they won't soon forget you either. There's nothing quite as dull as a hero who's as pure as the driven snow. And conversely, the best villains have qualities that we can admire, or flashes of humanity we can identify with. And that's the main strength of the Brigmore Witches and its exploration of Dowd, the mercenary assassin who murdered the Empress in the opening minutes of Dishonored's story. He's a conflicted character, struggling with the aftermath of his unconscionable actions and on a path to an inevitable, and possibly fatal, confrontation with Corvo Atano. I've lived in Dunwall's underworld a long time. I know the players, gang leaders, madams, corrupt officials. But what I need is a smuggler. The visual design here is very much in keeping with what has come before. The terrace streets, factories, sewers and a dockyard hold few surprises. The painterly aesthetic has lost none of its charm of course, but don't expect anything quite as memorable as the Knife of Dunwall's slaughterhouse. The most refreshing new setting is the final mission's Brigmore Manor, as the diffuse lighting of its gardens contrasts starkly with the gloomy, dilapidated interior. It's a fittingly overgrown home base for the witches, as their power is very much rooted in the earth. And what of Delilah, the leader of the witches and Dowd's ultimate target? Well, without spoiling anything, I'll say that the conclusion to her story is both sinister and satisfying, and really adds another layer to the events of the original game. I must say, I'm surprised you came this far. The end of Dowd's tale, on the other hand, is a little disappointing. Why? Because it's not linked to my Dishonored save game. When Corvo confronts me, he's on his own separate path. I should be killed or spared based on what I chose when I was playing as Corvo, not based on what I've done as Dowd. Seeing an alternate version of events play out made this side adventure feel disconnected from my Dishonored experience. You see his face when he asked me. Two-thirds of the Brigmore Witches is the journey from Dunwall to Brigmore Manor, and it's largely busy work that doesn't push much beyond tried and true dishonored game design. The jail setting, for instance, is quite confined, with only a handful of interconnected areas. Playing cat and mouse across the multiple levels of the cell blocks is good fun, but you'll quickly see all it has to offer. The next mission, on the other hand, is much larger in scope, but essentially boils down to a series of fetch quests. Still, it's cool seeing rival gangs battling it out in the streets, and you have real choice in how you handle it. The crux of this mission can be beaten entirely through diplomacy, or you can commit an act of supreme callousness, which I'm not going to spoil here. When you finally arrive at Brigmore Manor, a once stately mansion now in ruins, you'll discover a good mix of indoor and outdoor exploration, paired with some much more supernatural enemies. Teleporting witches, undead hounds, it's a good change of pace. Unsurprisingly, the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay in the Brigmore Witches really shines. The new abilities introduced in the Knife of Dunwall, such as summoning assassins, remain. But there's some new stuff to try out too. Pull is a telekinetic power which lets you nab items from a distance or, more interestingly, reel in guards to choke them out or kill them. Stun mines function much like arc mines but only knock enemies out as opposed to, you know, vaporizing them, while baffle dust is an upgrade for choke dust and leaves targets disorientated. Shaping Dowd's abilities to suit your playstyle is absolutely one of the main draws here, and I loved using completely different sets of powers and weapons in my stealth playthrough versus my kill them all and let God sort them out, run. I as well slit my own throat. The Brigmore Witches doesn't break much new ground, but the stealth or slaughter gameplay is as compelling as ever, as is exploring each new playground. Dowd also grows into his starring role with a better sense of purpose that helps drive the story forward. Your nastiest work in years. While the final confrontation with Corvo is a bit of a cop-out, Delilah's story is excellent and adds another facet to Dishonored's original tale. For more on Dishonored and why witches get stitches, keep it right here on IGN.